let's talk about E and M first. The force due to electric field, and of course, what is the electric field? All of that. Uh, I'm going to take a little different approach. I will talk about the force and the field simultaneously. It makes more sense that way. Electric force is defined like that. Have you seen this gravitational force? Right? They look remarkably the same, right? It just means it's a joint variation, so some constant of proportionality times charge of the first one, charge of the second one, or mass of the first one and mass of the second one, divided by the distance between the two squares. Right? Okay. So the numerator makes sense, and this constant makes sense. Could somebody close the window? Okay. I think I'm going to start over because that's ah, noise, right? Okay. Any of you who have to leave, like, can just quietly go. Okay. So let's take two. <laughs> let's talk about ENM. Unit one, the electrostatic forces and the electric field. Okay, I'm going to take a talk about both of them simultaneously. That makes more sense. So this is Coulomb's law. The force between two charges is joint variations, so a constant of proportionality, and Q1, Q2, divided by R squared, which remarkably looks similar to the law of gravitation. Right? Mass of the first and second body divided by R squared and this gravitational constant. Now, first thing we have to understand is why is it R squared and not just R? Right? Is this something obvious or is it something that we only could measure experimentally and verify? I mean, we still have to measure experimentally and verify it, but just, just think about that. Okay. And then now we are somewhat comfortable with what field is. For example, gravitational field points downward. You know what I'm saying? This is G. So if anybody right here is, will fall, it's that kind of idea, right? So field, and turns out that all of the forces are called field forces, okay? We'll talk about it. This R square in the denominator is only true if these things are point masses or point charges. Earth is not a point mass. Well, if you're far enough away from it, then it does look like point mass to you. Okay, so let's just think about the easier case. Say if it's infinitely large sheet. Say this is what generates the field. Okay, so field is coming out in this direction. Then do you see this is pretty much parallel, right? In that case, if a body is here, let's say this is Q, positive Q, right? And these are positive charges. And you can think of this as just gravitational field downward too. And then if you have a tiny little window catching that, say, no, that's, that didn't, let me throw this a little better. Right, if I move this thing outward, I'm going to, same amount of force field flux will penetrate this window everywhere. So it should not matter. It should be constant amount of field. Therefore, you should feel the constant amount of force. And I haven't although quite defined what field is yet, but field is what causes the force. Kind of like Star Wars idea of force. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you mean that you can make it further away from this uh -huh. uh, surface and the force is still constant? Yes. The field? Yeah, that's the whole idea behind it. Compare that with point charge, okay? And let's say that's still positive Q, okay? So these things will come out 
Let's throw it a little carefully. Well, that didn't work. So this will disperse in all directions. Like that. You know what I'm saying? And then outward. So if I draw a little window right here, I did not want to change the color of this. Okay, and then while I'm at it, I'm going to bring it down a little more. Like that. So if I draw this little window, all right, I'm going to draw one more field out here. That one is in the background. And then if I double the distance, watch what happens. So let's say this is a double the distance. Do you see I have quadrupled the surface area? You know what I'm saying? Now, amount of flux that's coming on through this surface is exactly the same amount as this surface, which means the force here is only proportional to the distance square. That makes sense to you? So that if I am creating a force field with my hand, let's say this is my hand, oh, and then forces go out and this direction. So whoever is closest to me will feel most amount of force. And as you get farther away, then force gets weaker and weaker because you are not seeing as many of these, of these field flux lines go through your body. That's the whole idea of the force field. Okay. And thanks to Star Wars, students tend to understand this so much better than 20 years ago. Well, actually they had Star Wars back then, but whatever. Okay. So these two is this is just uh, things called the Coulomb's constant, just a constant of proportionality. And in physics, that gives you a unit conversion as well. And this is Newton's law of gravitation. Okay, they work exactly the same way. Now, here are the, some constant in a table. So, charge of a proton and electrons are the same. And neutron, they neutral in charge, but the masses are like that. Proton and then neutrons are almost the same weight, and an electron is tiny. Okay, here's a little example which I did not want to just spend a whole lot of time, so I just copied the solutions as well. You can look at it comparing the electrostatic forces between two electrons versus the gravitational forces between them. And then as you, guess, as you can see, electrostatic forces are so much bigger than gravitational forces between two bodies. Okay, in order for you to feel gravity, I mean, you have to talk about size of a moon or something to create gravity that is significant enough. Electricity, electricity creates a lot of, a lot of forces between them. Okay, here's a good example. Okay, now I'm going to work, work this thing out. So, two identical small spheres and tiny in mass and is charged with Q, okay? And then, so if they are both positive, let's just say they are both positive charges at the moment, then have we learned so far in previous years that the positive, same charges hate each other, so repel each other, and then opposite charges, charges attract each other. So that much is true. Well, then there has to be a force due to electrostatic power, right? Repelling these from each other. Equal and opposite direction, action and reaction thing. But then gravity pulls these things down, correct? Mg. And this thing is pulled down by Mg. 
then we have a force equilibrium. Right, so how big is the charge then? Is the question. Okay, let's just compute those, right? So let's magnify this picture. So here is the charge with a positive Q and then mass M. Okay, let's draw the force diagram. So as before, there's this amount FQ, F electric. And then there's tension going that direction, correct? Of the string. And then this is theta right there. And then there has to be MG. Good. Okay. Do you see the right triangle here? See, this amount right here is same as this amount, and this vertical component has to be same as this vertical component. Good, 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 good. Just geometry-wise. Now, then, can we calculate the relationship between these two then? Do you see that F, electric force, is equal to mg and tangent theta? Too much trick, you want me to tell you? Tangent theta is equal to this over this, over this and so on. Okay, well then we can figure this out easy because theta is five degrees given. G is given, G, well we know G. M is given, right? Right, but then earlier, what was this? K, Q, in this case identical, square over the distance R square, which is 2a squared. You know what I'm saying? And each a being 0.15 meters. So far so good? So we equate the two. See, physics is always about substitution, right? Systems of equation. Then we see that q squared is equal to, let's say, 2a squared mg over k tangent theta. How about that? Good? Then we can plug in whatever, so we know q. Okay. Questions? So far, pretty trivial, right? For you to check the answer, here's the correct answer that I copied from the book. Okay, now, then I'm going to define what field is after doing this problem, okay? So Q1 and Q2, so this charge is Q1 and this charge is Q2, positive and negative, okay? Now we have to calculate the force, let's just calculate the force between as some charge. Let's just say that there's a charge Q naught and that's positive, okay? Now, if you have Q naught here, this will exert a force on these two charges as well. So this Q naught will push this thing backward and attract that thing. So this is a pretty chaotic dynamic situation. But here, assumption is this is tiny compared to these two. So that the word here is like, it's a test charge. Tiny, tiny compared to these two. Okay, let's just call it that. This situation is like this. You compared to Earth, right? You might say you are pretty big and it's okay, but compared to Earth, you are very tiny, insignificant. You know what I'm saying? And although you attract the Earth, Earth is not going to move because of you. Question? No, no, Q naught is the amount of charge that we are placing right here. So we are placing a little test charge, tiny compared to these two, both mass and charge-wise. 
but it's just tiny little positive charge that we are placing it right there. And this will enhance you to understand or feel this. OK, so far so good. Then let's just calculate the force. OK, what is the force that is exerted on Q0 by Q1 and Q2? And Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative. OK, because this Coulomb's law is dealing with magnitude only. OK, then you have to physically decide which direction this thing points to, depending on positive, same charge, opposite charge. So far with me? OK, I'm going to push these things down. OK. So force is a vector, so they just add, correct? So I will calculate the force of, oh, I forget which the subscripts kill us. I guess just force due to Q1, because they you write both of them, this and that, but I never, I can never remember which goes first, so it's like whatever, right? On Q0, good? <laughs> we'll pause, and edit the video. <laughs> this way I will see it and cut this part out. OK. So that has to be K Q1 Q0 over the distance R1. That makes sense to you? Yes. All square. Trying to see if you're paying attention. In this direction, right? That makes sense. So we are going to have to put it into the vector component. You know what I'm saying? OK, but let's just say Q, F in due to Q2. That's K, Q2, Q0 over R2 squared. That makes sense to you so far so good. But we have to add these two. Mm. So, so far we have a vector sum between this angle and this thing, this angle. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I'm gonna push this thing down a little bit. So these are just magnitude only. So if I wanna write this as F Q1 vector, how would I do that? I think you remember from pre-calculus, and then we can put this distance. So this angle right here is V, isn't it? So can we just put cosine V I vector plus sine V J vector? You know what I'm saying? So that's the vector form. Q2, if I want to write Q2, F of Q2 vector, that has to be K Q1, Q0 over R2 square. Yes. What did I do? Q2, Q0, R square. And then now we have to be careful because theta, the way it's given, is not a general angle theta, it's that way. You know what I'm saying? So we want to put negative cosine theta i vector just to make sure that it's pointing to the opposite direction. Not negative, not negative, not negative. It's this way and that's theta right there, right? So this is still cosine theta i vector. This is negative. Good. So far with me, how to write it as a vector before we can, because you guys are used to this much already, right? You can add, only add forces by putting it to component notation, then you add the X component and Y component. So far so good? Okay, so the total forces, let's just say, happens to be now, I don't want to do it anymore, but you can add it, right? Whatever, I'll just say FQ1, plus FQ2. Okay. Say instead of this 
thingy, say we know what how far this is. Or actually, we R1 and R2 is given, right? In case you have to guess it, this comes in handy with the exercise later. If you want to know how much cosine theta or sine theta is, is can be calculated? Yeah, sure. If you know R1 or what do you say? Do you do you want to say we are given this length or are we given R1 and R2? Actually, I'm going to put the C back. I will compute R1. R1 happens to be square root of A squared plus C squared, isn't it? And R2 happens to be square root of B squared plus C squared, depending on how the problem is given to you. Then you have sine theta. Now let's do cosine first. Cosine B happens to be this side over that side. So you have A over square root of A squared plus R squared. And sine B, C squared is C over square root of A squared plus C squared. And then you substitute these guys in here and here. OK. And then likewise here. And then you can figure out the entire without knowing these angle, because many times the problems will only give you these locations and not necessarily give you angle, but you can compute sine and cosine with this geometry. So far so good. Now let's define what field is. OK. Before we define what field in terms of where well, electric field is, let's just see gravitational field. OK. What is a gravitational field on the surface of the Earth? What's the magnitude of this field? 9.8. Right, G, 9.8 meters per second. You instinctively know what field is, right? So force due to gravity is mg. And the field, uh oh, we don't have any, we just call it E. Mg, negative mg downward, right? Then field is negative g downward. You know what I'm saying? You see the relationship between the two? This, this depends on your mass as well. If you are heavier, then you feel more force due to gravity. But this has to do with the Earth alone. You are out of the equation. So everybody feels exact same amount of gravitational field. Therefore, everybody accelerates exactly at the same rate. Do you know how to calculate G? This is how you calculate G. Force is gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, this is U, and then radius of the Earth on the surface. You know what I'm saying? So electric field has to be, you just take U out of the equation. And this turns out to be G. That makes sense to you? Now from this, you can already see if you go way, way, way high up there into the orbit where the satellites are, your gravity gets weaker. Going back to our original, original concept, the field is inversely proportional if the source looks like a point. But if it looks like a giant infinite plane, that is constant. So when we are on the surface of the Earth, it feels constant to you because Earth is so much bigger than you, but if you're way out there, it still looks like a point. Yes. So it's uniform no matter how far up you go into the plane? Usually somewhere out there is kind of in between. So it is, this is more correct. The center of mass principle and all, but if you're on the surface, if you move from here to there a little bit, you're, kind of, you're really not moving much. It's the curvature of the Earth does not come into play too much. So far with you, with me. So this is a concept of a field, okay? Taking your mass, so this mass, your weight, your mass is kind of like test mass. Tiny little thing to test the gravitational field. You know what I'm saying? So exactly same idea. So electrostatic force now. 
is Coulomb's constant, and then you have Q, and then let's say Q naught over R squared. Q naught is the test charge. You remember the tiny little charge that we had before? And then this is Q1 or Q2, the bigger one, which means electric field happens to be the magnitude with the time. You just take this test charge out. That makes sense to you? So it doesn't matter what charge it is. Um, depending on the amount of charge that you put into the field up there, right? Then you can compute the amount of force. So because the force that we calculate depends on the size of the test charge. In a way, the concept of a field is same as the unit, the force on a unit charge. But then when you say unit charge, one coulomb is huge amount of charge. So you don't want to say it like that, but it's more like a force density. Right? So that's definition of field, right? So from here, you can see that E magnitude, well, actually you can say E vector is equal to your force divided by charge. You know what I'm saying? Because here you divide by this amount of test charge. Or better way of saying that is F is equal to Q. So if you're given electric field, strength of the field, then whatever the force you want to calculate, you can just multiply it by the charge that you're bringing into that field, then you can, you know what I'm saying? Okay, going back here then. We want to calculate the field, right? Because the original problem said, calculate the electric field, not the electric force. And we just, I decide to put the test charge Q naught here. Good. So from here, electric field to, to Q1 happens to be KQ1 over R1 square. And electric field due to Q2 is equal to KQ2 over R2 square. How about that? And then you, if you want to add the two, then you have to convert them into vectors, X and Y component, and then add component by component. So far, so good. So do we have a concept of a field then? Okay. Now we have this situation. Well then, if you have a positive and negative charge at some distance away from each other, so how do we visualize the electric field? If I place tiny little test charge Q naught here, it wants to fly out that direction. So that's the direction of the field. How about that? These field lines really don't exist. Well, may or may not, we cannot see it. But only way you can feel it is with the test charge. If you put a tiny little test charge here, then it's going to go in that way. So these field lines go inward. That makes sense to you? But then if you have both charges, then how would they work out? Let's just think about that. Say, I mean, here is easy, right? If I place a test charge here, then it wants to go that way, right? So field lines will connect like this. That was easy. What about up here? Right? Due to positive charge, it's going to feel the force going that way, right? But due to this negative charge, it's going to feel the force going that way. And the vector sum of the two happens to be this way, correct? So the field is parallel to the right. We just calculated the one right here about due to two charges, then it's going to be somewhat, this one wins because it's, ah, let's just throw it. It's going to be that way. And yeah, due to that one, it's going to be this way, except this one wins. You know what I'm saying? So I think you have seen this picture before. That's why how these things connect to each other. And then the other side as well. You see why we create this kind of electric. See, so far we have only seen gravitational field and it's just towards the center because we don't have another big heavenly body near us other than a moon and moon actually influences Earth and then creates tide. Is that what kind of magnet looks like? 
Yes, those poles are also same idea. So if you have this di dipole, two pole together, then this is always the field. On a little side, what about two positive charges? Have you seen that before? Let's quickly draw that. If you have two positive charges, say here's a positive and here's a positive, then we can visualize it. If you put a little test charge, which is also positive, so the vector sum is that way, you know what I'm saying? And here, that way, this is weaker, so vector sum is like somewhere that way, you know what I'm saying? So have you seen this diagram, that asymptotic? Like that. And this side can just go out. You know what I'm saying? It bends inward. Because whatever you put here, other than you put it at that center, if it's a tiny bit off, it's going to fly off that way. This one is fly off this way. Right, so all of these test charges will move parallel to these field lines. Okay, and in mathematics, we call this thing the vector field. But idea is electric field, gravitational field, right? Field, and they are all vectors, so vector field. Yes. It is very much like slope field in two or three dimension. Because in slow field, you only have X and Y component. That's an excellent question. See, slow field, we just have an X and Y, so we can just, direction really didn't matter because it's increasing X direction, right? But as soon as you're two dimensional or three dimensional, you have to explain this thing by these little arrows, right? Actually, while we are here then, hey, this is the project that my first period has to complete in a month or so. This is a typical example of vector field, tornado. Right. I know you have to come up with the equation of this in a month. Three dimensional. You can see clearly defined I. So the direction the uh, direction gives you the direction of the wind slide upward and then the size of the arrow gives you the magnitude of the wind speed. You get it? Okay, so you kind of get what vector field is, right? And electric field, it's see, so far only field we have seen is gravitational field and that is for downward. And we don't want this to be downward because we are placing these charges all over the place and then we have to add them up. Okay, so far so good, right? Here's a little exercise that I copied from the book. Should I, and they want you to calculate the force exerted on this charge. I think you can do this, but here's a little idea. It's going to feel due to that one, due to this one, and due to that one, and then you add them up vector-wise. And you divide by these length distances, then that gives you your electric field as well. You get it? And then, of course, sine, cosine, you can figure out with the ratio of sine, cosine. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to leave this as an exercise and then maybe on the next se session or in the class, then I'm going to, if you want me to solve it out for you, then I will do it. But you really need to do this in order to make this concrete. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to this. This is a mother of all problems. Here's a disc with the charge density sigma. And we have to calculate the strengths of the electric field somewhere from uh, from the axis center, x units away, and we'll call it the point P. We'll take this tiny little ring, right? And then we'll compute the charge on that thing, okay? 
So I'm going to throw that ring over here. Say here we have a ring like this. That didn't work out too good, but hey, so this is the ring right here. OK, and then we have the axis. Inside. So we have the axis running through. Uh, I want to make it a little more 3D looking thingy. Bear with me. That makes sense to you. So this is the X axis. Good. And then now we have a point P here. Let's say this is P. Right there. Good. I'm going to take a little section. Of the charge from here, OK? And then I'm going to calculate the electric field due to that little charge at this point, OK? So first thing is we need that distance, correct? And from this diagram, this much is x from center here, correct? And this distance is r. Good. So whatever that little Q is, uh, which I don't want to call it DQ because DQ is the charge of this entire ring, right? So I'll call this thing DQ tilde, whatever the charge of that little thing is. Let's just calculate that electric field. An electric field will be in this direction, DE. You know what I'm saying? D tilde, if you will. Okay, so this magnitude, this thingy, will be Coulomb's constant that I talked about, K, and then dQ tilde over the distance squared. And this is Pythagorean theorem right here. So this distance is square root of R squared plus X squared. You know what I'm saying? So over that thing is squared, so we have R squared plus X squared. So far, so good. OK, now I'm going to take another symmetrical thing right here, so which will also have exactly the same amount of charge because I'm say, taking exact same piece. And then, then we'll have electric field this way. E tilde is equal to K dQ tilde over R square plus X square. Now it's a vector sum of the two. Good. So what we can figure out here is the Y component cancel each other. And it's just the X component that just doubles up. And this thing E happens to be then D E tilde, well, two, and then cosine theta, and that thing being theta. Are we good? Okay, then. Now, for each little piece here, there's always the opposite piece on the other side, right? And then whole thing will keep canceling all the way. You guys see that? So idea is we can just take uh, take care of this entire thing as a DQ and then just multiply it by cosine theta. It's the whole point. You see that? OK, then I'm going to recycle this picture. I'm going to push this thing out to the right. And then do it over here. So that's a little preliminary thing. I think the best thing to do is just move this picture down, right? OK. So I shove it down and bring this thing down. OK, now, so at this point P, 
whatever the electric field that I have going this direction has to be, the, I'm going to call this thing DE now, not tilde, all of this, right? Has to be this expression I have, so K DQ over R squared plus X squared, and then cosine theta. So far so good? Because DQ is the entire collection of charge on this ring, and then I do have to multiply by cosine theta because of the reason over here, right? This X component. And then all the Y components will cancel because that will create a ring around it. Any questions so far? Now we have to figure out what cosine theta is, right? Okay, so let's do that. Cosine theta. From this picture up here, do you see that this is theta, right? Good. So cosine happens to be this x over r square root. x over square root of r square plus x square. So far so good. So we are going to substitute that here. While we are at it, then we'll figure out what dq is. Okay. So dq with a different color, purple now. dq here, would that be density times this little area? So the charge density times the A. And this is exactly what, it, what we did in chapter seven. So this is charge density times, thinking of this as circumference times a little dr. You know what I'm saying? So the circumference, which is 2 pi r, r being the radius of the ring, and times the r. Good. So I'm going to substitute that here. With me. And then we can compute dE. So we have k dQ is sigma 2 pi r dr and then over r squared plus x squared and then cosine theta happens to be x over square root of r squared plus x squared. So far so good. Okay, let's clean that up. So what we have is, let's make it pretty, two entire things. So we can say two pi k sigma, good, and x. You see x is constant because our variable is r here in our integration. So usually when you see x, wow, is that? No, 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 x is constant, it's just the distance. Okay, then we have r, then r squared plus x squared negative three over two times dr. Good, any confusion? Now we can integrate. So our E is the integral from zero to capital R, the whole disk. Good, and then we put two pi k sigma x r, r squared plus x squared negative three over two, the r. So far so good? Okay then, what kind of technique should we deploy right here? This is when you jump in. You get it? Okay, so you see we have two R, so that whole thing is DU. Your physics book does it a little differently, but we'll do it this way. So we have pi K sigma X U to the negative three half power and du. So far so good. Now we have to change the limits of integration. So substitute zero here into r, then u becomes x squared down here. And substitute capital R here, then u becomes r squared plus x squared. You with me? 
Okay, then integrate. So we have pi k sigma x constant, and this thingy becomes u to the negative one half, therefore negative two from x squared to r squared plus x squared. Good. Okay. This is equal to take two out, so two pi k sigma x. Use plumbing professor, so this minus that. So we have x squared to the one half power. Is it just x then to the negative minus, and then that whole thingy u. That let's just write it r squared plus x squared to the negative one half power. Good. Okay, so 2 pi k sigma x, you have 1 over x minus 1 over square root of r square plus x square. Good. Lastly, and it's just cosmetics, distribute x, so 2 pi k sigma 1 minus x over square root of r squared plus x squared. How about that? And this happens to be the electric field due to this collection of charges out here. Now, instead of giving the entire charge, why do they give a charge density, right? Charge density, of course, here is the total charge, Q divided by this area. Pi r squared. You know what I'm saying? And the reason is you will eventually have to calculate the electric field of infinitely big stuff. Acceleration of the positive charge. This one is actually quite easy. Say we have constant electric field. Okay. So if you create the, this is known as the pedal load capacitor, you get a couple of big plates compared to the size of this charge and charge one side with a positive and the other side with negative and you release a little positive charge and then it's going to fly. Good. Then do you see that this electric field is constant? Okay, then. So uniform electric field, meaning constant electric field, okay, parallel. And so, and you have released it from this point, so it's gonna fly and go to the other side. Okay, find the speed of the particle, okay. So in order to figure out the speed of the particle, we have to figure out the acceleration of the particle, right? So remember the force is equal to Q, our little Q, times E. Good? But then F is equal to MA, so A is equal to F over M. So do you see that now? Acceleration here is QE over M. That makes sense to you? Okay, we have distance, which they are calling it D. Right, okay. Which means, are you familiar with? This. And then this is zero. Ah, that's easy. So your final is equal to square root of 2AD. And substitute our A from here. So what we get is 2E, um, A, that, not that A, this A in here. So 2, let's say QE over M, how's that? Good? Did I miss anything? T. QED over N. How's that? Good. Lastly, what is the unit of electric field? 
Mm -hmm. See, the key is here. E is equal to the force divided by the charge, right? So that unit has to be Newton, the force, divided by Coulomb, just to get the right units. Okay, that's that kind of sums up for all I have today. The craziest one happens to be that integral one. Okay, any questions? Yes. Um, so the symbol for the Coulomb is that Q? Huh? Oh, whoa, 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 <laughs> Newton's Q. Capital Q. Nice question. No, it's not even capital Q, it's C. Coulomb is C. Oh my God. Okay, it's been a while. Alrighty, any questions on anything before we call it a day? Alrighty, yeah. Where it would still be the electric force times the distance? Yes, actually, if you, it's coming up, so work happens to be the force times theta x, right? Or in our language, This is a dot product, like that, right? Negative. Which means, in our case, there's a Q naught E dot DS from A to B. Okay, so on the next time, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the work within certain electric field, parallel field being the easiest one, and then how to do, this is really a line integral, and which you haven't learned how to do yet, so I'm going to have to show you the basics of line integral and how this thing works out. Okay, so we'll do that next time. I think this is enough for... We'll also go over like a little bit about potential energy. Oh yeah. You want me to talk about it now? Work? This work is potential energy, right? Yeah. So if you have some kind of, let's just think about the simple case, gravitational potential energy, how to compute that. And you know that's MGH, right? But suppose you want to move in that direction. Then the dot product will take care of you. Just you only want that little component. Right, so this is still the potential energy U is still negative of so like point A and point B of A to B of it turns out to be this. But that dot product will only give you MGH. <laughs> How about that? That we really have to learn how but to do a line into it. Yeah, you have to figure out this sign very carefully. Because in case of gravity, there's only attracting forces. But now there are repelling forces and attracting forces that you have to be very, very careful on how to figure out this sign. Okay, but so far, this is just there to make our potential energy positive, the word positive, right? Okay, so we'll do that part and the basic line integral next time.